So to compare all three flagship computers, pre-built computers from all the big OEMs, Lenovo, HP, and Dell, I had to grab one of those Alienware Aurora R10s and make that comparison between all three of them and see which one is the best. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hardware Sense channel. My name is Ivan and today we are going to look at this Alienware Aurora R10, or I'm shortly I'm gonna just call it the R10 from now on because that name is kind of long. But why did I grab this one? Like I mentioned on the intro, I wanted to compare all the flagships between all the three big OEMs, Lenovo, HP, and Dell. The Alienware being the highest level among all the pre-builds and all the gaming computers from Dell. The Omen 30L, that one from HP, and the Lenovo Legion Tower 7, my personal favorite and probably still gonna remain the top dog in that game. But we're gonna compare all of them in a future video and point out some of the pluses and the minuses between them. But for now, we're gonna focus on this one and let me quickly abbreviate what's the story about this R10. A couple weeks ago, President's Day weekend discounts, Dell had a lot of big discounts across pretty much all their pre-builds and they had the two of the best ones for the R10. One was with this configuration, which is Ryzen 7 3700X, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage, and most of all, it was coming up with RTX 3070. All that was selling under $1,200. Now, of course, the hype was way too big. Even at the release time, I jumped in and I couldn't secure one because they vanished in less than a minute. Uh, I'm not sure how many they actually had, but people were not sleeping on that configuration because it was extremely, extremely good deal. Later that same day, they released another one, same exact components, but instead of RTX 3070, there was RTX 3060 Ti, so I grabbed this one with a quickness, so it cost me $1,200 with the same Ryzen 7 3700X, 512 gigabytes of NVMe storage, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, dual channel, two by eight. Um, unfortunately, it's 2933, but I'm planning to upgrade it anyway. And last but not least, the RTX 3060 Ti. I wanted to grab the 3070 because I wanted to compare the 3070 versions between the ones from Dell, from uh, HP and from Lenovo, have all three of them because I already have the Lenovo and the HP. I wanted to have the third one from Dell and see which one is the best, which one did the most engineering work behind to uh, make it cooler, quieter, more appealing. I just wanted to compare all three of them across uh, the board for now. I cannot do this, but we can figure it out something else with the other two. But anyway, 3060 Ti, it's no slouch. Performance is uh, on the level or above 2080 Super, which was a very expensive card at the time. And this one is supposed to be half of the price if you find it, but we know how it is today. So 3060 Ti currently are being sold around a thousand dollars on eBay. So just take it the way it is. Just the GPU and the processor in this uh, Aurora R10 is going to be over the paid $1,200. So the rest of it is just a, a great deal. So whoever secured that same deal or even the better one with 3070, thumbs up. Great job, guys. You got yourself a great computer. A lot of things to consider right away. And even before I received this R10, I already knew that I'm going to have to do some improvements. And we're going to go through this in this video and see what we can do to make the cooling better and a lot quieter with this R10 because what they give you, it's all that great components, but we have the dingy little uh, stock fan and heat sink. They, they putting even on the G5s and they're putting on the XPS. Everybody pretty much is uh, using. It's just not enough. It's not capable to keep that Ryzen processor or pretty much any other processor cool. So we're gonna upgrade that. Um, there's a few options to upgrade. A lot of people are considering, a lot of people are doing. The most popular one is with Corsair H60 that can be done uh, successfully, but I chose the other route. I wanted to do the stock cooling solution and buy the Acetec Alienware specific one that normally ships with these configurations if you are configured yourself and you pick it uh, as an option. So I ordered one of these from eBay. Since Dell were not offering it on their part side, I contacted them multiple times and it was out of stock. So. I went ahead and grabbed one from eBay, not that expensive, $45. So for me, that's worth it. 
uh, keeps everything very stock. In addition, those that are shipped with uh, the liquid cooler, there is a two heat sinks for the VRMs, uh, but if, when you get it with the air cooler, there, those are missing, but uh, don't, don't fret. I found them very, very cheap directly from Dell. You can buy both of them for $10. That's a great price. Um, I went ahead before that and bought one of them on eBay, just one for over $10, $12 around. If I knew that Dell has them on their part side for a lot cheaper, I would have grabbed them straight from there. But anyway, I'm gonna show you uh, where those are going and everything and how to install them. Show you how to install the all-in-one liquid cooler and of course, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade the fans because the stock fans are extremely, extremely loud. Uh, the one, I think the one that it's on the AIO pushes 147 CFMs. And you can imagine this is ramping up above 3,000, 4,000 RPM to deliver that. So it sounds like a leaf blower. It sounds like the Omen 30L fan. Uh, so it's very, very loud. So there's a couple of options with fans. One is being the Corsair 120 ML Pros. Uh, those are not throwing a bias error. And the other one I know is Noctua fans, uh, one of the popular Noctua fans. I'm gonna leave a link in the description as well for both fans. Those I know for 100%, they're not throwing a bias error. And actually I found out about the Noctua a little bit later. I would have grabbed the Noctuas because they're a lot quieter. The Noctua is rated about 22 uh, decibels and the uh, max of those Corsairs is 35, so big difference in noise. Uh, still, the Corsair is a lot, lot quieter compared to the stock fans, but with the Noctua, it would have been even more quiet. Uh, so if you're going after silence, you definitely need to get, get yourself the Noctua. Um, if you're not bothered that much, if you're playing with headphones, the Corsair will suffice. And the price difference between the two fans is about $10. So really, yeah, you can, you can save $20 buying two of each. Uh, and buying two of each is what I did for the AIO. So these are the plans for now. We're gonna put push-pull two fans on the top for the AS stock AIO and one Corsair fan in the front to replace the stock intake fan. Hopefully that will bring our temperatures uh, down significantly and improve the uh, noise with this case. And I'm planning to mount a smaller fan above it. So you guys are gonna see that as well. Now, a little bit about the visuals. I know this case is not everybody's taste and really it's, it's really not my favorite as well. Too many plastics, there's no window, you cannot see anything inside. Uh, it's kind of cramped. It looks big, but because of all the plastic inside, the case is actually the same frame they used on the old XPS 8930. And they've been using this frame for the Aurora for a long, long time. And I think they need to redesign and do some, some dramatic changes if they want to stay ahead of the game. Um, considering their prices normally are very, very high, much higher than HP and much higher than Lenovo. I think Lenovo's implementation is 20 times better than what they've done here. But if you get something on a great deal like this, around $1,100, $1,200 with the components inside, yeah, it's absolutely amazing deal. It beats everybody else. It's basically half of the price of the HP, half of the price of the Lenovo. So it's a clear winner when it comes to price performance, but you need to spend a few dollars to make it better. Definitely liquid cooler is needed. Better fans are needed. Uh, some other modifications are needed. I'm gonna be adding an extra storage as well. So all that I'm gonna show you in this video. I know it's gonna be lengthy, but you guys uh, know me. If you've been in this channel for a while, you know that I go through a lot of details to show what can be improved with all these pre-builds. I can't stress that enough. Buying a pre-build today is pretty much the only way that you can get any GPU at MSRP price without paying scalpers, resellers, and obscene amount of money online. Uh, and I'm not seeing that change at least for another six months. So if you want a game, these are your options. You can do much. So without wasting too much time for unboxings and all that. So let me show you a few things around this case. I'm gonna talk about the things that we need to improve and the things you must consider doing right away when you bought this uh, specific configuration or similar ones that featured the stock air cooling solution uh, air cooling solution that you guys seen on my previous uh, Dell XPS uh, 8940 video not very good 
and especially in this specific case it's even worse because the power supply is laying almost on top of it and it's blocking almost all air coming into it so the ryzen 7 3700x that it's inside is running really hot we really don't want to do this and the really good only option for us to improve the cooling in this case is to add an all-in-one liquid cooler which luckily at least for us they'll have placed enough space on the top since they are providing an oem version of their all-in-one liquid cooler unfortunately this specific configuration did not come with it and being a great deal uh, i can't really be mad about it since the deal was incredible moving on so rtx 3060 ti very uh, little compact design metal backplate i'm gonna pull it out later you guys are gonna see how it looks the geforce rtx logo is lit up when you turn it on which is kind of pointless in this case because you're never gonna see it through the side plastic door but if you're planning to grab it and move it in another case it's gonna look really nice very simple design i really really like what they did how simple it is the fans are not my favorite but again i'm gonna talk about that later the things we can do first thing what i did the memory that came was 2 by 8 16 gigabytes hyperx fury very similar to the ones you're seeing down there right now but it was clocked at 2933 and i had this 2x16 kit from my omen 30l that it's running at 3200 megahertz and i immediately replaced it activated the xmp in the bios works like a charm no problem whatsoever so now i have 32 gigabytes of ram running at 3200 megahertz before we proceed to upgrading this cooling solution i'm gonna uh, tell you what uh, i did and this is it i grabbed it from ebay for around 45 dollars unfortunately if you contact dell they're constantly out of stock of these it's kind of not possible to find them so the only source is ebay if you find those for around you know 40 50 60 dollars i think it's still better because this is exactly what they have intended for cooling solution it has the logo the tubes are nice and short so it's not going to be out of the way but obviously we're going to replace this stock fan because it's extremely loud and i'm going to use two uh, corsair 120 millimeter ml pros in push pull situation i'm going to show you how that is done push pull on the top we're going to have that installed in this video and the other thing to consider because of this configuration is supplied with air cooling solution they're not giving you the much needed vrm heat sinks but again you can source these on your own i got this for ten dollars from ebay and i can place it down there on my own already has the thermal pads on the bottom i'm gonna just screw it down there when i install the pump of the aio and it'll be good enough for me unfortunately i could not find the smaller one that it's in the back there's another smaller one heating similar to this one that needs to be in the back i'm going to contact uh, dell and see if they can sell me one if not i'm going to continue to search but at least most of them right here i'm going to have covered and i'm not too worried about these on the top since they're close to the fans and these fans kind of draw the heat out so they're going to be somewhat ventilated here but these are kind of out of the way and there's no exhaust fan in the back so you're out of luck pretty much and then the last thing to improve the cooling and silence is to remove and replace the front intake fan which is 120 millimeter as well i and i have the same exact fan the corsair that i'm going to place there that way the noise level is going to drop down significantly because this stock cooling solution with this fan and this top fan currently are producing a lot of noise uh, and forget about the noise the temperature is just unbearable uh, running benchmarks or doing production work like cinebench uh, the Ryzen 7 3700X is just getting cooked inside with this tiny cooling solution. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me remove the graphics card and show it to you. But right before that, uh, in the bottom right here, uh, they have two cages for extra storage. And as always, I installed uh, one of those SK Hynix SATA 3 SSD drives, 500 gigabytes to expand my storage. To, to remove the graphics card, you need to just first unplug this, the eight pin power connector and this 550 watt power supply that it's uh, kind of the lower level they give you it's actually really nice it has two pci express connectors like that uh, and then this graphics card support is right here we can move out of the way and now uh, the graphics card is easy to remove just push the lock button on the bottom of the motherboard and here it is this is how the rtx 3060 ti looks uh, these fans are not my favorite i've seen them before 
in ASUS products uh, back when it was GTX 780. So far, the graphics card performs very well. We have four copper heat pipes in the bottom, quite a good thin array, uh, back plates with pass-through. You can see right here, the air comes out. Very compact and small, quite a compact solution that you can use in many, many other builds. And if you don't like this computer, you wanna just sell this, you probably get at least $1,000 for it at the current state of uh, the market. By the way, the storage solution is Samsung NVMe drive, 500 gigabytes. This is the fastest NVMe drive, OEM NVMe drive I've ever seen. And you will see the results on the screen. This thing is blazing fast. Now removing this heatsink and fan, it's very, very easy. Very similar to what we did with the XPS uh, 8940. Just unscrew on the diagonal pattern and we're gonna extract it out, clean up the CPU and prepare the top where we can install our OEM all-in-one liquid cooler. We're dealing with the exact same tiny air cooler solution. Very, very incapable to keep that processor or pretty much any other processor at bay, especially if you are uh, doing a serious work or gaming or benchmarking with it. And this is the Ryzen 7 3700. X, I'm gonna clean it up. Looks like they didn't put too much thermal paste, which is good. Now that everything is nice and clean, I'm gonna remove the memory as well. This is the memory from my Omen 30L 2x16. So next thing we're gonna do, we are going to unplug the power right here from the motherboard, uh, keep it out of the way so we can pull that top panel off. Start from the top here, we're gonna pull this top panel off so we can reveal everything here now pulling this uh, top cover it's going to feel like you're breaking it but if you pry your fingers right here on the back start from the back and kind of slowly push your fingers along the side uh, it's going to buckle and eventually you're going to be able to pull it off don't be afraid but don't be impatient don't rush take your time it's going to come off eventually and then everything else will be revealed for you to do so now we have this big opening here where the a stock fan was mounted in this bracket. It's orientated like this. So there are two screws going here and going here. Once you unscrew them, you slide it forward towards the front of the case and kind of lift it off uh, very easily uh, done. Uh, this fan is extremely loud and pushes a lot of air, but at the same time revs, I think like 4,000 RPMs. Uh, so it's getting really, really uh, crazy noise. It's Delta made. Uh, but we don't want that, so we're gonna remove it, take it out of the way. Now with the ML120 Pros, these are kind of expensive if you think about it for a single fan. Uh, most of the times they're around $30. Currently they're actually on sale on Amazon for $20. So I grabbed them uh, on promo, but still pretty expensive. The magnetic levitation fans, very good, long lasting, quiet, very solid. PWM, better long of a cable, but we're gonna figure that out. And to, to be able to mount both of them on push-pull, I'm gonna use one of those Y splitters uh, from Noctua. Uh, this one is kind of short, that's why I wanted to use it. So as a beginning, we want to first remove the stock fan of the AIO. And then after that, we're gonna mount the one that is on the bottom for the push. So that way we're gonna be able to mount both of them uh, right there on the top. So here is the stock fan. Nidec, super industrial looking and very, very loud and noisy. Pushes a ton of air, but we don't need that. We need two on push-pull, much quieter. And this one is gonna go into the archives. So because how big it is, I wanted to reposition a little bit and show you uh, different angles on exactly where and how the heatsink and where exactly the radiator and the fans are gonna go. So one thing to consider before you mount everything together is inside of the cage, you will see there's not a lot of clearance if you wanna mount all the fans on top of the radiator and try to push it in, it's not gonna happen. So the best solution is to actually have the top fan already, push it through here and kind of route your screws in the back through the holes. That way when you put the radiator later, so it's gonna be a little bit tricky matching the holes of the radiator with uh, the ones on the top. But uh, with little patience, we're gonna be able to do it, no problem. Just channel all four screws on the top. And now when we wanna put our radiator with the mounted bottom fan, which is the push fan, we're just gonna have to put them all in like this. Not a lot of room to work with, but we're gonna have to do it somehow. So 
So there's a couple things to consider once you mount the radiator on the top. Squeezing in the pump and the water block on top of the CPU, it's a bit challenging and I wish that I could film it better and show it to you, but because it's meant, those tubes are meant to be a little bit longer because you don't have push-pull regularly on the stock. Now with the push-pull, the whole radiator is a little bit down further, so they are kind of bending. So you need to kind of a little bit force them in, uh, bend, bend them a little bit. They're not kinked or pinched or anything like that, but it takes a little bit of force. And before you place the pump, make sure to connect the backside here. Power for it, and of course the fans with the Y splitter. Uh, go by the numbers on those screws, one, two, three, four, doing diagonal pattern. Don't use too much force. Uh, the, the screw will stop eventually and that indicates that it's done. Now it's the good time for us to mount this stock a heat sink that we have. And it's highly advisable you get one of those because you don't want that VRMs to be completely exposed since we're not having any more air, a real air circulation down there. So we want to place it over the hose and tighten it down in place. Just use enough force until the screws stop. And there we go. Now we have the heat sink over the major of your ramps. There's a small one, like I mentioned on the back. I'm gonna try to get one from Dell if possible, if I don't find one on eBay. Now from here, I'm just gonna rotate the computer around and take the front cage out, show you how that's done and uh, try to see if I can mount my 80 millimeter fan for intake there. Now rotate it to the side. I'm gonna take the bracket from the hard drive cage, take it out of the side, unscrew the two holding screws that are right here in the front and slide it up. And that's it, we have the cage. So you can see actually there's a mounting points right here for a fan. Maybe I will be able to mount the fan right there. So I guess Dell thought about it and uh, they left us enough space to mount this fan. I'm not sure how much uh, air is gonna push since these perforations are not the best and we have some obstruction here but at least we can route a cable to the side, uh, use the rubber isolators that I showed you before and kind of you know, push it through here. And uh, this way, this fan will be able to be mounted on, on the hard drive cage instead of a hard drive. We're gonna white split it with the front fan and that way we're gonna have two right there. So now all I need to do is just uh, plug back the cage, bolt it, and I'm gonna lift the power supply out of the way so I have a little bit more room to use my Y splitter and get uh, the front two fans connected. All I need to do now is grab my Y splitter, disconnect the fan here from the motherboard. And with this one, I have an optional because this is a three-way uh, Y splitter, but I'm not gonna use that. So from here, just to tuck, tuck the cable in the back and plug it into the motherboard. Let's reinstall our memory back into a place and finally reinstall our graphics card as well. And now we can lower the power supply down, make sure no cables are pinched, make sure everything is out of the way. Plug our power supply for the graphics card and we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it uh, and see how it behaves. I'm gonna run some tests. Hopefully there's no bias errors, there's no problems. I really, really hope so because I don't want to put this back together. But yeah, let's go ahead and check it out. All right, on to the conclusion with the Dell slash Alienware Aurora R10, the Ryzen based Aurora. And I'm going to tell you why I really like this computer. The first and foremost, the great price. This is half of the price of the Lenovo. This is half of the price of the HP. And, and actually, if you manage to grab it on the same deal with the 3070, that would have been an absolutely killer deal. But even with the 3060 Ti, that is a very, very good deal because just the GPU is $1,000. I mean, come on. A lot of improvements you guys see, they're very, very necessary to keep those temperatures down. And you will see the comparison. Uh, stock temperatures, the CPU was going at 94, 95 degrees with only one run of Cinebench R20. With the stock AIO push-pull configuration, we got it down to a lower 70s. So 72, 73, this is 20 degrees drop of the temperatures and they're absolutely necessary because the cooler you keep that Ryzen, the more frequency it's gonna boost, the better performance you're gonna have. So this is necessary. And on top of that, 
it's a lot a lot quieter installation of the vrm heat sinks highly recommend they're cheap get them for ten dollars both install them it's going to be a lot better to dissipate that heat because now we don't have an air cooler to blow down on those components and you definitely need that front intake fan again another must keep that noise down and i highly recommend if you're spending a little bit more money instead of getting the corsair fans just get the nocto fans get three two on the top one in the front and uh the noise is going to be even lower you you probably never going to hear it you know with these i can kind of hear it obviously if you have a headphones it's going to be fine storage there's two cage in the bottom i put my regular 512 gigabytes sk hynix uh, ssd drive just enough for my games but if you want more of course but if you want more go of course you can uh, expand that as much as you want the stock nvme drive samsung is extremely fast this is the fastest nvme drive among all the pre-builds among all these high level pre-builds that i've seen so far the speeds are incredible memory the stock memory i took away right away and i put in my 32 gigabyte kit the one that i had left over from the hp omen 30l uh, since i upgraded that memory to 4x8 rgb hyperx fury and i took that 2x16 non-rgb uh, hyperx fury that was on the omen and put it in here because you can't really see there is no window so you really don't need rgb and 32 gigabytes much better now the timings are not anything crazy it's cl18 but at the same time that's 32 gigabytes i prefer to have that than some cl16 uh 16 gigabytes the ram worked without any issues and one thing that dell does for the alienware and i wish i just wish all the oems do the same thing is give you an xmp profile you can go to the bios just enable the xmp profile don't even touch anything with the timings reboot and off you go you have aftermarket memory that goes to its stock intended xmp profile frequencies and no issues whatsoever off you go end the story why can't lenovo or why can't hp do the same thing i'm out of clues but thank you alienware thank you dell for doing this for us upgrading memory is extremely easy a lot of people are having concerns about the power supply i personally don't 550 watts power supply is plenty for this graphics card and even 3070 um, i mean look at it hp is selling 3070 with their omen 30ls with 500 watt power supply so this one is better no concerns whatsoever in the future if you want to do 3080 or whatever comes in more powerful you can just swap that power supply no problem whatsoever it's regular atx power supply so off you go so yeah that's that's pretty much it i think this is a great buy for the price if you grab it for 1200 or around with that same components it's going to make you very happy you're going to be able to have a very capable gaming machine and with the modifications i did it's going to be very quiet so it, and it's going to last longer because you're keeping the temperatures down and you're gonna love it hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new there are a lot more coming very very soon i have more pre-builds coming to show you and i'm gonna do a lot of comparisons and games and tests and everything every single computer we're gonna have his own game tests and we're gonna have comparison between stock performance versus improvements and mods and everything else so a lot more coming i have a couple of exciting laptops coming very soon as well so there will be plenty of content and you guys are gonna love it and as always guys you have a wonderful day